What's up everybody, this is Teacher Ivan from Next Gen Academy. Our goal in this channel is to help you achieve your highest potential and to help you understand subjects in the easiest and the most efficient way. If you'd like to get more tips and tricks on how to achieve A star in your IGCSE, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to this channel. Lastly, if you need any help in your studies, you can always head on to our website, link in the below or our Instagram, drop us a DM and we'll be able to help you. Enjoy this video and I wish you all the best. All right, okay, welcome back my next gen family. Today we are going to go through this paper, October, November 2023, paper 2-3. Okay, I won't go through all this, uh, but you all have mentioned a couple of questions, few tricky questions in this paper. Okay, so let's go. Question one, the functions f and g are defined as follows for all real values of x fx equals to 2 sin x plus 3 cos x, gx is e3x minus 1. Find g0. Okay, they done chapter 1 already. Easy chapter 8. So f, g0. Okay, what is g0? I substitute in x as 0 minus 1. Okay? So you will get here, what's e to the power of 0? 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 will become 0. Then I substitute in 2 sine 0 plus 3 cos 0. Okay, just type in the calculator, you'll get 3. Question 1. Question 2. Good game x. Okay, gg. ggx. g, e3x minus 1. This is a composite function. So now I need to replace my x with e3x. Minus one or so. So here we come e three e to the power of three x. Oops, three x minus one minus one. Okay, open up the bracket e to the power of three e three x minus three minus one. Okay, anything else can we simplify for here? Anything else that we want to do? So near idea, right? Okay, actually, this one one mark only. So you right here, they actually give you the, the one mark already. Okay, don't go do anything further. Question three, solve the equation g inverse x equals to one over three ln five. Okay, let me ask all of you here. I want you all to type in the chat. How do you all do this question? What was your first step? Okay, can everyone tell me? Okay, everyone find g inverse, inverse of g. Invert and then equate to one over three ln five. Ah, ah, okay. I see Vasha Nohing. Find inverse of g, then equate it to the value. Okay. Got two ways to do this, huh? Got one easier way, one slightly longer way. Okay. I know most of you here, you all will go and find what is uh the inverse first, right? Okay, I'll do the slightly longer way first. First one, which is we find inverse first. Okay, so number one, find g inverse x first. Okay, so we do the, the normal way. So you let y equals to g inverse x, g y is equals to x. Then you do this, uh, e, yeah, what's g, e 3y minus 1 equals to x, e to the power of 3y equals to x plus 1, 3y equals to ln, x plus 1, y equals to 1 over 3, ln x plus 1. Okay, this is your g inverse x. Then we let it equate to the value on the right-hand side. Okay, so here will be 1 over 3, ln x plus 1, 1 over 3, ln 5. We just compare both the arguments together. So x plus 1 is equal to 5, x is equal to 4. Okay, I think majority of you did this right. Method 1. Method 2, instead of finding g inverse x, okay, I want you all to keep this in mind because in mathematics, when you all do function, this is one of the methods that you all require to do also. You can inverse your inverse. You understand? What's the meaning? You can inverse your inverse. You, when you inverse your inverse, you will get back to g again. Okay, so inverse 
g inverse x. What will it be? So when you inverse the inverse, you will be left with x equals to g 1 over 3 ln 5. Chaotic? Is this working? Okay, then what is gx? gx is e3 power y minus 1. So x equals to e3 1 over 3 ln 5 minus 1. Okay? Simplify it. e ln 5 minus 1. Okay, do you all remember what is this? Uh, e ln 5. Okay, what is the value of e ln 5? Okay, now this one we seldom use it, but it'll be just five minutes. Five minus one, which is four. See? Same answer, right? Okay, method one or method two, easier. Shorter, right? Three marks. Okay, both also is correct, huh? not to say which one which one is better or not, just that one of it is shorter. Okay, and I want you all to remember this uh, because I think this equation, like this specific e ln something, we seldom use it. Right? So e, we, we need to, to know this, is that e ln x, okay, or you can remember that e ln mask is equals to his surname only. Okay, we can call him Mr. Mask also, right? So e ln x, the value is just x. Okay, if you're not sure, you just type in the calculator, okay, e ln 5. Okay, calculator cannot show the value. e ln 5. Oh, okay, can. We gotta close the bracket. Okay, but if just x itself like that, or sometimes it might be just an expression, right? You all got to remember this. Huh? This time we seldom use it. Huh? Okay. Yeah, just move g to the other side, correct? Because when you inverse this, it goes back to g again. Okay, what is the concept of this actually? You all have to go back to the understanding, the basic, basic of function. Function last time where we understand is like this, right? Your input to output. This is x. This is your y, right? So this is, let's say, gx. So when I inverse back, okay, so this one is like that. If I start from here, I inverse, my inverse means I go back to gx again. Make sense? Okay, if you all do the, the math question, you all go and see your, your IGCSE mathematics question, you will see quite a number of times that you need to do this inverse, inverse. Right? Okay, it's like a one mark question type of question. Okay, number one, all good. Everyone try to type one if y'all are good with question number one. Okay, not too hard. I think this is quite a straightforward function question. Okay, let's move on to number two. Okay, number two, find the values of k for which the curve y equals to kx square, uh, y equals x square plus kx plus 4k minus 15 is completely above the x-axis. What is completely above the x-axis? Means it doesn't touch, right? Okay, if you got x-axis like this, you have a graph like that. Ah, not touching. So what is this? This means no real roots. No real roots means your discriminant is less than zero. Okay, so we need to substitute into b square minus 4ac less than zero. Okay, what's your a, b, and c? a is one, b, k, c, 4k minus 15. Okay, substitute inside k square minus 4ac is less than zero. Open up the bracket k square minus 16k plus 60 less than zero. Okay, this is a quadratic inequality. Okay, quadratic inequality. So when we do quadratic inequality, number one, we rearrange it first. Then we find the roots. Okay, or we call it the critical values. It's k minus 6, k minus 10 less than zero. K equals to 6 and k equals to 10. Okay, rearrange, find the roots, then you draw the shape out. You draw the shape. 6 and 10, you put the values here, and the region will be at the bottom. Okay, do you need to draw this out? Don't need, okay? These are no marks, right? But this is the way that we learn from the textbook. Okay, so 6 to 10. 
Okay, so I, I remember this acronym. Huh? We rearrange first RRFS. We find the roots. Okay, we draw the shape out, which is this one. Then we solve it. Okay, rearrange to what? Rearrange to AX squared plus BX plus C. Okay, then you'll get two roots. R, R, S, F. This is for quadratic inequality. Okay, if you are good, just type two for this question two. Okay, easier, straightforward. Okay, let's go to question three. Let's move on to question three. Solve the following simultaneous equation. You got the final answer, but put discriminant more than zero. I know more than zero wrong already. Long. Okay, uh, more than zero. If you put more than zero, then your answer will be k less than 6k more than 10, right? Okay, you minus one mark. Okay, you minus one mark. In the middle there, if you put more than zero, actually they're, they're not very particular. Lah. But you still put your answer as a range, lah. as in in between 6 and 10. Oh, okay, tricky this one. Um, actually, you're lucky. Lah. Okay, if according to the mark scheme, they say whatever that you put above actually doesn't matter. Okay. They say any inequality sign or equals. Also, they will still give you the marks. Okay, but just be careful. Huh? You put six less than x, less than 10. Correct. Right, right. Same answer. Right? Or x. Uh, uh you gotta put it as k. Yeah, gotta put it as k. Okay, any more questions? Just be careful. Huh? All these simple, simple things, you all just double check it. Okay, let's move on to question three. Okay, just now someone got a um, question on this. Solve the following simultaneous equation. Okay, look at these two equations. We have something common, which is log 2x, log 2x, and log 2y, log 2y. Okay, what I like to do, simplify the equation first. Simplify the equation so that it's easier for you to, um, to solve it. So I will let log 2x equals to a, log 2y equals to b. Okay, so easier for me to see. 3a plus 2b equals to 24. 5a minus 3b equals to 2. Okay, this I can solve it up. Much easier, right? Okay, let's call this equation 1, equation 2. Okay, I want to do elimination method. I will eliminate the b first. Okay, so 1 times 3, and then equation two, uh, 2 times 2. So we will get here 9a plus 6b equals to 24 times 3 is 72. Okay, 5a minus 3b this one will become 10a minus 6b equals to 4. Okay, let's call this equation 3, equation 4. Okay, I want to eliminate both of these. I will plus both the equation together. Different symbol, we've got to plus it. However, if you are using substitution, doesn't matter. Okay, same thing. 19a equals to 76. a is equals to 76 over 19, which is equals to 4. Okay, let's find the b. Okay, I'm going to sub a into 1. 3 times 4 plus 2b equals to 24. 2b equals to 12. b is equals to 6. Okay, we're not going to leave it in a and b. we got to solve it for the x and y. Okay, so here, log 2x is equals to 4, then log 2y is equals to 6. We can do log form to index form, which is base power, okay, this is your base, this is your power. Okay, that equals to whatever. Okay, so this one will be like that. X, or we can write it as 2 to the power of 4 equals to X. X is equals to 16. Use the same form again. 2 to the power of 6 is equals to Y. Y is equals to 64. Question 3A. Okay, next one. Question 3B. Solve the equation 2 to the power of T plus 4 over 2 to the power of 1 minus 2t. Okay, 512. We gotta change 
it to base two first. So two to the power of t plus four over uh, this I can write as minus one minus two t equals to two to the power of nine. Simplify the left hand side, two to the power of three t plus three, two to the power of nine. Three t plus three equals to nine. Three t equals to six. T is equals to two. Okay, which one you all didn't know just now? Which one were you all stuck at? 3A or 3B? 3B. Eh? Oh, the log. Eh? You didn't make into A and B or the log. Uh, try to simplify it first because always think of if you've got anything common, we want to simplify it first. Even simple things, right? Like if you try to solve it in terms of log 2x and log 2y may look a bit complicated, right? Because you keep have to write the same thing over and over again. And it looks very long. Uh, so we want to always simplify the equation first. Okay, if y'all are good, question three, just type three in the chat. Okay, somehow I found this paper actually pretty short to, to do. Let me see. What are the hard questions? Maybe towards the end. Now. That's quite short to do. Okay. Let's go to question four. Find the exact value of integrate 3 to 5 x minus 1 square over x cubed dx. Can we integrate this straight away? u over v cannot right okay so we cannot we cannot do this so what to do over here okay what can we do over here we need to simplify it first okay whenever you see a form like this cannot do so you need to simplify this entire thing here first x okay i'll just write down the the values here first x minus one square over x cubed x square minus two x plus one over x cubed Okay, you divide all of it one by one, you get x negative 1 plus 2x power negative 2 plus x to the power of negative 3. Okay, we always need to remember when at the bottom is x to the power of 1, this one will be the only one that is ln. Okay, so we write it as 1 over x. The rest, we just leave it as power. Negative 2, oh, sorry, yeah. This is negative 2. Okay. Is it negative 2? Yeah, negative 2. Yeah, my bad. Okay, let's integrate this. Integrate 3 to 5, 1 over x minus 2 x to the power of negative 2 plus x to the power of negative 3 dx. Okay, first one, we will get ln x plus 2 to the power of x minus 1 minus 1 over 2 x to the power of negative 2 3 to 5 okay this one i straight away calculate out. this one is x to the power of negative 1 over negative 1 okay so always take note for integration anything at the bottom okay if denominator uh, if x term in denominator is power one then we think about ln okay don't try to integrate it using the power rule way because you get x to the power of zero even if you get like uh, maybe two x plus five as long as x power one think about this ln okay now we're gonna substitute all of it inside okay substitute the five minus substitute the three ln five plus uh okay i want to write it as two over five minus 1 over 2 times 5 square minus ln 3 plus 2 over 3 minus 1 over 2, 3 square. How do I change x to the power of negative 3? Power plus 1 divide new power. 
x to the power of negative 3 divided by negative 2. Okay, all, all is just basic power rule. Okay, next time, put together all the same terms together. Ln 5, okay, we open up this bracket first. Ln 5 plus 19 over 50 minus ln 3 minus 7 over 80. What's ln 5 minus ln 3? Okay, ln 5 minus ln 3. You can write it as ln 5 over 3, then minus 52 over 2 to 5. Okay, number 4. If you all are good with number 4, can you all just type 4 in the chat? Okay, let's go. Next one. Question five. Okay, the curved surface area of cylinder with radius r and height h is 2 pi r height. A closed cylinder has radius r cm and volume 1000 cm cube. Show that the total surface area of the cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2000 over r. Okay, curved surface area, 2 pi r h. Number one, what is a cylinder first? Okay, draw out. Okay, let's draw your cylinder. This is a cylinder. Like that. Okay, then they say another thing is a closed cylinder. Okay, that means this one is all closed. It has radius r and volume 1000 cm cube. Okay, we want to find what is the total surface area. Okay, what is area first? If okay, we write it down on the side here. Area will be your top and bottom. Okay, your top and bottom is pi r square. Then the side here is 2 pi r height. Okay, these are formulas from your mathematics. So you have 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r height. We look into this equation. What is non-existent here? Based on this. Height, right? Okay, the height. So that means we need to find an expression for height to substitute it off. Okay, they gave us this thing here, volume. Volume, okay, by the way, this is a very common uh, differentiation question. Okay, they will give you some sort of shape, volume, area, or parameter, one sum into the other. Then after that, the next question, you will need to differentiate it to find the maximum or minimum value. So volume. Volume is... Okay, what's the formula? Volume is pi r square pi. Yeah, okay, we find what is the h first. So pi r square height equals to 1,000. Height is 1,000 over pi r square. Okay, we're going to substitute it in. Okay, so 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r 1000 over pi r square. Okay, this is replacing the height. Open up the bracket. 2 pi r square plus 2000 over r. Okay, next time. Find the value of r, which makes this area a minimum. You should show that your value of r gives a minimum for this area. Okay, what, what is this area is a, is a minimum? Okay, when, you, when you see, uh, this type of question come out a lot. Further max, yeah. Second derivative, whenever you see the word maximum or minimum, okay, these keywords are, you want to prove your area, volume, parameter, or value of y. You just see this word maximum or minimum. You use second derivative. 
okay, d square y over dx square, you want to prove that it's less than zero or more than zero. Right? I want you to remember this. Huh? So now they are saying area is a minimum. So that means, um, okay, but before we, we go into there, huh, is you do, what's got one step before that. Maximum or minimum also means is the stationary point, your turning point. So the first step will be finding what is dy over dx equals to zero first. Okay, this is the first one. Then second one. Okay, we are going to start with the equation that we found in the previous question, which is 2 pi r squared plus 2000 over r. Okay, we're going to find dA over dr first. dA over dr is equals to 4 pi r Minus, okay, if you know how to differentiate this, uh, you can just put 2000 over r squared. Okay, but anyway, if you want to write it down, it will be like this 2000 r to the power of negative 1, negative 2000 r to the power of negative 2. Okay, this is like that. Y prime. Now we're going to substitute dA over dr equals to 0 because this is a minimum value. So here, 0 equals to 4 pi r minus 2000 over r square. Okay, bring the 2000 over r square to the left hand side. Then I rearrange it, make r one side, then the rest all on the left hand side. Not 4000 over r square. Where do you get 4000? 2,000 or 4,000? 4, okay. Double check your value. Um, okay, then here, cube. You need to cube root it. 2,000 over 4 pi equals to r. r, calculate this, you get 5.42. Okay, so I have checked, I have find the value of R, but normally they will ask you to find the minimum uh, area value. Then you need to substitute this in, back into A. But in this case, they are just asking you to find the value of R. This second part, you should show your value of R gives a minimum for this area. So that means I need to check my second derivative here, okay, which is d square A over dr square, which is 4 pi plus. 4,000 over r cubed. Okay, 4,000 over r cubed. Which you get 4 pi. Okay, you substitute in the, uh, the previous one. Okay, you substitute in this value. Okay, so 4,000 over, okay, what I will do, uh, I will just substitute in this value here so I can use the exact value. 2,000 over 4 pi, but it actually is 5.42 cube. Okay? Go and calculate this whole thing. You will get 4 pi plus 8 pi, which is equal to 12 pi. Okay, 12 pi is more than zero, then you can say, therefore, minimum. Okay, five more question. This is under differentiation. Okay, under differentiation. Okay, all good. Five questions. Okay, if y'all are good, question five, just type five. Just type a five. Yeah, I think it's, it's easy if you know how to do this, yeah. Yeah, just, just remember differentiation got few different parts, right? Okay, we will also spend uh one, I think one of the, the lesson to focus everything on calculus uh, because there's so many things that we need to, to do. Okay, I'll stop here first, okay, because I'll leave the second half. I think these first five questions is pretty easy. Um, okay, then we'll continue in the next section, the next five. All right, okay. We are going to continue on the second part of October, November, 2023, paper 2-3. Okay, let's go to question six. A particle travels in a straight line, its displacement as meters from the origin at time t seconds 
where t is more than 2 is given s equals to ln 4t square minus 5 minus t. Find expressions for the velocity and acceleration of the particle. Okay, kinematics question. So they give us s. What's the relationship between f velocity and a? S v a. Okay, we find Mr. Siva. Go down, you will differentiate. Go up, you will integrate. Okay, given to us, s equals to ln 4t square minus 5 minus t. Okay, we are going to find v first. We're going to differentiate s. How do we differentiate this? 4t square minus 5. So when we get ln fx, it will be f prime x over fx. Okay, this is your y prime, just in case anyone don't have to know. This one, if you got ln fx, you differentiate. If you differentiate it, then you put it on top, then the bottom remains. So 4t squared minus 5, you'll get 8t over 4t squared minus 5. Then you'll get minus 1. t will be minus 1. All right, everyone clear? This one, just purely formula only. Okay, they want us to find v, they also want us to find a. A, we only need to differentiate this one here because this one is a quotient rule. This one will give you zero. Okay, so quotient rule, for me to find this, I need to use u and v prime. Uh, maybe I write here. Okay, u equals to 8t, v equals to 4t squared minus 5, u prime 8, v prime 8t. Okay, what's the formula that we are going to use? dy, the y prime is v u prime minus u v prime over v squared. Okay, I will write down the a here. So a, a will be v u prime, 4t squared minus 5 times 8 minus 8t times 8t over v squared, 4t squared minus 5 squared. Okay, do we need to simplify this? Okay, let's just simplify it. So here, when you open up the bracket, you'll get 32 t squared minus 40 minus 64 t squared over 4 t squared minus 5 squared. Okay, and the final one we will get is minus 32 t squared minus 40 over 4t squared minus 5 squared. Okay, in total you have 4 marks. Okay, if you leave it actually according to the mark scheme, you, I think if you, the moment you write until here, right, actually you get 2 marks already. Yeah. Okay, uh, so make sure you put it correctly. My suggestion, always write down your u, v, u prime, v prime first. So that you can check that rather rather than you all just cram everything up like that. Sometimes it's a bit hard for you to check. Okay, let's go to question B. Find the time when the particle is at rest. Expanded to one fraction. Uh do you need it? Do you need to do that? Don't need. Don't need. They never ask you, don't don't do extra things. Okay? I'll just leave it like this. Right. What about this? At rest. At rest means okay, the keyword at rest means v equals to zero. This is just a keyword. V is equals to zero. Okay, we're gonna pick the v value. Okay, what's the, the v? V is 8t 8t over 4t square minus 5 minus 1 equals to 0. Okay, we bring the 1 over to the other side first. Equals to 1. Then we cross multiply this. Then multiply up. 8t equals to 4t squared minus 5. Okay, then we make it to a quadratic equation. 4t squared minus 8t minus 5 equals to 0. 
Then we factorize this 2t plus 1, 2t minus 5 equals to 0. t is negative 1 over 2, t is 5 over 2. Time cannot be negative, so we're going to reject this one. This is the only answer. t equals to 5 over 2. Okay, next slide. Question three. Find the acceleration at this time. So this time means t equals to 5 over 2. We have an equation for a. Okay, what's the, the a? A we have is this a negative 32 t squared minus 40, 4 t squared minus 5 squared. Okay, we're going to substitute this inside. So this one will be minus 32, 5 over 2 square minus 40 over 4, 5 over 2 square minus 5 square. Okay, we are not confident to type the whole thing in a calculator, do part by part. So do, do on top. Okay, what can you do? Do on top. Uh, Okay, so do the, the top part first, minus 32 times 5 over 2 square minus 40. If okay, you get minus 240 at the bottom, you will get 4 times 5 over 2 square minus 5 is a square. Okay, 400. Minus 240 over 500, you will get negative. 0.6. Okay, kinematics, question six. If you are good, you can get a type of six. I think this is quite straightforward. All right, question seven. Okay, question seven, this time uh, a bit tricky. Huh? They say do not use a calculator in this question, but you use the calculator to check the answer. Okay, to check your final answer if you can. Lah. But Key thing is you still need to be able to show it. And if you see this case, got the cert and all, so most likely you have to show your process of rationalizing. Okay, let's look at the first one. Given that the area of the triangle ABC is 3 plus cert 3 over 4, show that sine 75 is equals to 6 plus, uh, cert 6 plus cert 2 over 4. All right, what do we need to, to do? This is a five mark question. Area of triangle. So we need to be clear first. Area of triangle, when it is not a right angle triangle, area means 1 over 2 AB sine C. Okay, we work backwards. They gave us area here. Okay, they take on area. But they want us to find sine 75. So can I say that I want to use this here as my AB? Because I can find sine, I can put in sine 75 here and then a, B, and then equals to this one, right? Okay, so we need to work backwards from what they give us here. This is your go down mouth, huh? our 1 over 2 A, B, sine C. So I need to find what is this B, C here first. Can I find B, C? Okay, normally when triangle like this, there are three formulas that you all need to, to use. Area of triangle, sine rule, and then cos rule, okay? This is non-right angle triangle. So sometimes you will just write down first, you figure out from here itself, non right angle triangle. Okay, let's use sine rule to find this first. Okay, sine rule normally I draw like that. Okay, when you can draw two opposite sides, then you can find the, the formula here. Okay, BC over sine 60 equals to 2 over sine 45 degrees. Okay, I bring, bring the sine 60 to the right-hand side and sine 60 degrees. Okay, we are not supposed to use calculator for this, but my suggestion, you use calculator to just double-check your answer. Okay, sum in all the, the values that they give you at this list here. Sine 45 is this. Sine 60 is this. Okay, so I'm assuming, right, this type of question for those who are doing the new syllabus, okay, whoever that's listening to this, uh, this one will most likely come out in the paper one type of question. 
So sine 45, set 2 over 2 times sine 60, set 3 over 2. Okay, how can we simplify this part here? This is what I will write. Set 2, divide, set 2 over 2, which is set 2 times 2 over set 2, which is equal to 2. Okay, set 2 and set 2 will cancel off. So it's 2 times set 3 over 2, which you'll get BC is set 3. Okay, so I got uh, BC already. Now I can put into the area formula. 1 over 2 a, B, sine C. Okay, by the way, this one, the first one that we did, this is your sine group. Okay, 1 over 2 A, B, sine C. This is your area. Let's substitute it in. Area that was given to us. 3 plus 3 over 4 equals to 1 over 2 2 times 3 sine 75 degrees. Okay, do I want to solve for sine 75 degrees? No, don't need. We just want to make it as a subject. So you shift everything to the one side. Okay, just shift everything to the one side. So we can do it like this. 2 times 3 plus 3. And at the bottom here, 4 set 2 times set 3, which is sine 75 degrees. Okay, then here, we open it up. 6, um, okay, I, I put sine 75 on the left-hand side. 6 plus 2 set 3 over 4 set 6. Okay, they don't want it in this form because we need to rationalize the denominator. Okay, times set 6 times set 6. 6 set 6 plus 2. This one you will get uh, set 18 over 4 times 6, 24. How do we simplify this? So we need to go to the rules and we need to see the form that they, they want over here. So 6, okay, the 2 set 18, set 18, I need to simplify to 2 times, okay, I don't know how specific they want us to write, but we, we just write it again to be, to be safe. Set 9, set 2, 24, we we'll continue here. 2 set 6 plus 2 times 3, 6 set 2, over 24. Hey, hold on a minute. Did I do something wrong? Uh, set 9, set 2. Okay, give me a moment. Huh? I wrote something wrong already. 6 plus 2, set 3. 6, set 6. Plus 2, Set 9, set 2. Okay, how come my value suddenly disappeared? Okay, like that. 6, set 6, right? Okay, 6, set 6 plus 6, set 2 over 24. Okay, divide all of it by 6, we'll get set 6 plus set 2 over 4. Okay, if unsure what to present, right? Always best to write extra. Okay, just write extra, won't get wrong, man. Okay, this is question A. So we got sine 75 ready. Now they say find the exact length of AC. Okay, how to find exact length of AC? Always write 12. What's 12? I say always write more, not write 12. Always write more if you are unsure. Okay, find the exact length of AC. We have here, okay, we have sine 75. We can use sine rule also. Okay, this one we can just use sine rule. I will use sine rule over cos rule. I think uh, cos rule also you can, you can find this one. So we will use sine rule, which is AC over sine 75 degrees equals to set 2 over sine 45 degrees. Okay, rearrange it. AC equals to set 2 over sine 45 degrees multiplied by sine 75 degrees. Okay. What do we have? 
sine 45, did they give us? Set 2 over 2. Do the same thing. Set 2 over 2. Sine 75. Set 6 plus set 2 over 4. This will be 2 times set 6 plus set 2 over 4. This and this cut we will be left with set 6 plus set 2 over 2. Okay. 7D. There's now some of your answers, right? 7D. Two marks today. Okay, if you are good, you can just type a 7. This kind of questions will come out in paper 1. I never said it before. There's no such thing as paper 1, paper 2 type of question. Oh, okay, okay. This one, I said paper 1. 2025 onwards. 2025 onwards. Your intake doesn't, it's not affected. Okay, so for 2025 syllabus onwards. Okay, let's go next one. Question 8. Show that this is equal to this. Yeah, this is the whole thing. All right, let's start with the left hand side. Okay, there are various ways that y'all can do it. Later, y'all can look at the mark scheme also to see which way. I'll, I'll show you the, the way that I did. So I'll start from the left hand side. 9x. Um, okay, I will change the tangent x to sine x over cos x because I don't want any tangent. If you see on the right hand side, only sine and cos. Minus 1. Minus cos x sine x over cos x plus 1. Okay, what I'm going to do here is thing by cos x. They both top and bottom. So I need a bit more space here. Okay, I'm going to multiply here. Cos x times cos x. This one is cos x times cos x. Okay, you don't have to follow this method. Huh? I'll just show you my the method that I, that I did here. Okay, on top, you'll get sine x cos x over. Okay, this one you'll get sine x minus cos x. This one, I'll get cos square x. Okay, here I'll get sine x plus cos x. Okay, why did I do this? You observe here. A square minus b square. A square minus b square, we can think about what? A plus b, a minus b. So in the way, I'm actually working both ways. I'm observing the right-hand side, what I want to achieve. So you see here, a minus b, a plus b. Okay, this is what I want to, I want to do. All right, so join, join it together. So I want to make it to one fraction right now. Sine x, cos x. Okay, this part here, I need to multiply by sine x plus cos x, the other denominator. Then here, cos square x, sine x minus cos x over. Okay, this one will be a square minus b square. So sine square x minus cos square x. Okay, the bottom separate already. Now we want to simplify the top part to become cos x. Okay, let's open up the bracket first. So you will get here, uh, sine square x cos x plus sine x cos square x minus sine x cos square x plus cos cube x over sine square x minus cos square x. Can we see any, any terms that are the same? These two, right? Sine x, cos square x, the same. So I don't want. Minus it all. So I'll be left with cos x, uh, sine square x, cos x, plus cos cube x, both of these terms. What I can do here, I can factorize out a cos x. Okay, because it's something similar. So here we'll be left with sine square x plus cos square x. Bottom, sine square x minus cos square x. Once sine square plus cos square, you'll get 1. Okay, which you will get here like that. Sine square x minus cos square x. 
right? If you use a different way, it doesn't matter. Huh? Just stick to your method. Okay, this is question A. Okay, let's move on to question B. They say, hence solve the equation sine x over tangent x minus 1 minus cos x over tangent x plus 1 equals to 1. Okay, normally, if they ask you to show the previous one, you need to use the other side and then you just solve it. Okay, solve the question. So we're going to take the right-hand side that was given to us. Cos x over sine square x minus cos square x equals to 1. The bottom part here, I'm going to multiply it up. So cos x equals to sine square x minus cos square x. Okay, what can I do here? I got two trigos. Not good. Cannot solve. Okay, unless you can factorize it. But sine square x minus cos square x, so you either change everything to sine or you change everything to cos. Okay, which one do you think you want to, to change to? Everything to sine or everything to cos. So you look over here. I here already got cos and cos squared. Cos, I cannot change it because we only use identities to change. And identities is all in square. Sine square, cos square, tangent square, cosecant square. So you either change this or this, sine square, cos square. Uh, you change everything to cos. So for this part here, sine square, let's change it to cos square. Okay, you look at the identities, which identity has sine and cos. Okay, sine square, cos square. Sine square, x plus cos square x equals to 1. Okay, let's replace this sine square x. 1 minus cos square x. We replace this one. 1 minus cos square x minus cos square x. 1 minus 2 cos square x. Okay, we shift everything to the left-hand side so that it can become a quadratic equation. Cos x minus 1 equals to 0. Okay, everyone good idea here? To simplify it. So think about changing to one trivial. Okay, normally this is the guidance. Only either sine, cos, or tangent when you've got multiple trivials. You try to do that. If you cannot do that, then you need to try to at least factorize it. Okay, so from here, we are gonna factorize it. Okay, treat your cos as constant term, but I'll just write it like that. 2 cos x minus 1 cos x plus 1 equals to 0. So you got 2 over here. Okay, let's just write the answer straight away. Cos x equals to 1 over 2. Cos x equals to negative 1. Then you solve your normal triple like that. Okay, so what we need to find here next, we need to find our alpha. Alpha is inverse cos 1 over 2. You will get our base angle is 60 degrees. We draw our ASTC. ASTC, which quadrant is it at? A and C. Okay, so first quadrant and last quadrant. Where your X here, first one is 60 degrees. This one is 360 minus 60, which is 300 degrees. So you get two answers here. Okay, for minus one, do we need to draw uh, do we need to draw the ASTC? Okay, what was the method that I taught you all? For 0, negative 1, and 1, you just directly use, it, use the graph. You use the graph here like that. So find exactly where your cos x is negative 1. Over here, right? Which is at 180 degrees. So this one, don't use ASTC. Okay, if you type in the calculator, okay, they will give you, like let's say if you type in, we use the ASTC method, you type in inverse cos 1, they give you zero. So sometimes students are a bit confused. What is zero? Okay, so write this down. For sine and cos, when value is negative one, zero, one, use original graph. Okay, to solve the, the question. No need to use ASDC. Okay, clear? Question 8D, just now some of you have issues. Okay, if you all are good, you can just type an 8 to get these three answers here. Can I solve using sine and cos? Cannot. 
you know, you either do sign or you either do all the cost. But I think this one you only can use cost because your sign X at just now at the here, right? Your sign X here. Uh, your, sorry, your cost X here cannot change to, to sign. Uh. Cost square X can change to sign square, but cost X cannot change to sign. Right, let's move on. Question nine. This is a differentiation question. A curve has equation y equals to x e power to x. Find dy over dx. This is a product rule. So u is equal to x, v equals to e to x, u prime one, v prime e to x. You use product rule. Product rule is u v prime plus v u prime. So here we will get x two e power two x plus e to the power two x times one. You get two x e to the power two x plus e to the power two x. If we just keep it here first, later we have to see. We need to simplify in any manner. No? Okay, question B, find the equation of the normal to the curve at x equals to 1. Equation of the normal means I need to find my gradient first, then gradient of normal, and find my y, then put into the equation, the straight line equation. So our dy over dx was 2x e 2x plus e to the power of 2x. x equals to 1. Okay, let's substitute this in 2 times 1 e to 1 plus e to the power 1. Okay, we will get here 2 e square plus e square, which is 3 e square. Okay, this is my gradient, the normal gradient. Then gradient of normal. Okay, gradient of normal. It's just your negative inverse. Okay, negative 1 over 3 e squared. Okay, after I have this m normal already, I need to find what is my y value also. Okay, you need x and y and a gradient. So your y, when x equals to 1, you substitute back into this original equation. So it will be 1 e 2 to the power of 1, which is e to the power of 2. Okay, so I got this. Write down m normal negative 1 over 3 e squared. My x and y is 1 e squared. I'm going to substitute into y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. So y minus e squared equals to negative 1 over 3 e squared x minus y. Mm, okay, then I... Maybe I'm going to write it in a certain form. Okay, actually, you leave it here like this, so it's okay. But normally, I like to write it into y equals mx plus c. So y equals to 1 over 3e squared x plus 1 over 3e squared plus e squared. Okay, you leave it until here, it's correct already. You don't, don't need to do anything extra. Okay, question B. Let's go to question C. Now they say, use your answer to part A to find the exact value of 2x e to the power of 2x. Okay, so what we need to observe here, this is a product rule type of integration. So can we do a product rule? Cannot. The only way for you to do product rule, quotient rule type of integration is to do a reverse differentiation. Okay, reverse differentiation method. So we observe from question A. Let's go to back to, to question A. Okay, you look here, question A, when I differentiate y equals to e, uh, x, e to x, my dy over dx is 2x e to x plus e to the power of 2x. Okay, we use this part here to, to understand this question. If y equals to x e to x, so you look over here, there is part of here that we want to integrate. So if this going down is differentiation, this going up will be integration. Okay, so we write down the first equation first. Integrate 2x e 2x plus e to the power of 2x dx is equal to x e to the power of 2x. 
This is how we understand. We are doing a reverse differentiation. However, we only want this part here. Okay, so this part, we bring to the other side. So we will write it like this, e2x dx equals to x e2x this one minus, but you integrate here, e to the power of 2x dx, which you will get x e2x minus 1 over 2 e to the power of 2x plus c. Okay, 1 over 2 e to the power of 2x plus c. This is in indefinite integral. They want definite integral. So let's add the 0 and 2. 0 to 2x e to the power of 2x dx is equals to x e 2x minus 1 over 2 e power 2x 0 to 2. You can remove the c already. Substitute in 2 and 0. So here we become 2 e 4 minus 1 over 2 e 4 minus a. This one will be 0. This one will be minus 1 over 2. Okay, 1 over 2 times e to the power 0, which is 1. Okay, what we get here? You will get 2 minus 1 over 2, which is 3 over 2 e to the power of 4 plus 1 over 2. Okay, question 9, everyone good? Then we all just type 9. All right. Okay, let's go to the last question. Last question here today. Question 10. In an arithmetic progression, the fifth term is 11, the seventh term is 3 times the second term. Find the first term and the common difference. Arithmetic, fifth term, 11. Second statement, seventh term is 3 times second term. Find the first term, which means I want my A and my D. Okay, so we are going to use arithmetic progression, the formula first, which is term is a plus n minus 1 d. Okay, do we need to use the uh, sum? Sum don't need right. Okay, so don't need right now. So let's just do this first. We change the statement. Arithmetic fifth term is 11. So u5 is equals to 11. u5 will be a plus n minus 1, 5 minus 1, which is 4, d equals to 11. Okay, this will be my first equation. Second statement, seventh term is equals to 3 times second term. So u7 equals to 3u2. This will be a plus 6d equals to 3 bracket a plus d. Okay, simplify this 3a plus 3d. Um, okay, we can just make one of it to be the subject. So here will become 3d equals to 2a. A can be 3 over 2d. Okay, so I got 1 and 2. Let us sub 2 into 1. Okay, substitute the a into there. So you get 3 over 2d plus 4d equals to 11. 3 over 2 plus 4, you get 11 over 2d equals 11. d is 11 times 2 over 11. So d is equal to 2. Then let's find the a value. Okay, I'm going to substitute into equation 2. Okay, sub d equals to 2 into 2, which is d. Okay, a is equal to 3 over 2 times 2. a is equal to 3. Okay, last one. Okay, last one, many statements, six marks. A different arithmetic progression, AT, and a geometric progression, GP, have the following properties. The first terms of the AT are both 3. Okay, so we need to take note this one first. Both the A is equals to 3. The second term of the AT is equals to the third term of the GP. 
It means, okay, I'll just write in terms of AP. AP second term is the same as geometric progression, GP3. The sixth term of the AP is same as the fifth term of the GP. And then they say the common ratio, this one is more than one. Okay, find the common difference of the AP and the common ratio of the GP. Okay, let's find, uh, you, if you look over here, right, all the statements is related to n term only. So it has nothing to do with sum of n terms, so we don't care about that other formula. Okay, let's start with the AP first. AP, this is for n term. Okay, all the, the n terms. n term for AP is equal to 3 plus, okay, because A, right, A plus n minus 1 D. For GP, geometry progression is AR to the power of n. So 3 r to the power of n minus 1. Okay, both of it we are referring to just n term. Now let's translate both of these. AP2 okay, AP2 is equal to GP3. Okay, we put into the formula, so 3 plus D is equal to 3 r to the power of First equation, okay, cannot simplify already, so let's just leave it like this. Second one, AP6 is equal to GP5. Okay, AP6 is equal to GP5. So this will be 3 plus 5D equals to 3R to the power of 4. Okay, 5 minus 1 is 4. Right. Can I take this as my second one? Okay, so you can either do a substitution or elimination. This is up to you. For me, I'll do elimination. So I want to eliminate the D. So I'm going to take equation 1 multiplied by 5. So this one will become 15 plus 5D equals to 15R to the power of 4. Okay, I'm going to minus both of these together. Let's call this equation 3. Minus both of this. So equation 2 minus equation 3. 2 minus 3. Okay, what's 3 minus 15 will be equals to minus 12 equals to 3 minus 15 here also. Okay, which is minus 12 r to the power of 4. Hey, 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 hold on a minute. Which is wrong already. This one is squared. Okay, so here you get 3 r4 minus. 15R squared. Okay, you look over here. So some of you, I think you all will get stuck over here, right? What do you need to do? 3R to the power of 4 minus 15R squared, and then got minus 12. You have to know that this is a quadratic equation. So you move everything to one side first. So 3R4 minus 15R squared plus 12 equals to 0. I divide all by 3. R4 minus 5R squared plus or equals to zero. Yeah, okay. We need to let r square equals to u. So this will be u square minus 5u plus 4 equals to zero. u minus 4, u minus 1 equals to zero. So u is equals to 4, u is equals to positive 1. Change back the u to r square, r square equals to 4 r squared is equals to 1. r will be plus minus 2. r is plus minus 1. So you have a total of 4 answers over here for your r. But what did they say? Common ratio of the GP is greater than 1. That means it cannot be positive 1, cannot be negative 1, cannot be negative 2. The only one answer that they want in this question is r is equals to positive 2. Right, so here, once we got r equals to positive 2, we can find d. Okay, you find another equation that has d. They only want r and d, so we substitute into this one here. Equation 1. So sum r equals to 2 into equation 1. We'll get 3 plus d equals to 3 times 2 squared. d is equals to 9. 
All right, all good. Okay, go and calculate your marks. Okay, go and calculate your marks. I'll send this to y'all. Okay, so this is the end of October 2023, paper 2-3. We'll move on to our next agenda.